Hi guys, it's Joe, and in this video I'll be showing you how to program more realistic sounding drums. I'll be doing this in Logic, but it can be applied in any DAW or music software. So first thing I want to talk about is velocity. And velocity is essentially how hard the MIDI notes are hit. So the velocity here for all our notes is 63, and its values between 1 and 127. And the lower it is, the quieter the sound, and the higher it is, the louder the sound. So we kind of just got it in the middle here sounds like this. So I'll just I'll show you this drum beat and how it sounds really quickly, so it's quite simple, nothing to it really. So pretty plain and boring, and does not sound realistic. So I'm going to go through and change the velocity and all the notes, and I'm going to pull this up as well so you can see a bit better what I'm doing, but I'll be changing the velocity to make it sound more realistic. And one of the key ways to do that is to increase velocities on beats that you want to kind of stand out a little bit more. So on this drum beat, let's say I just want beats one and three actually to stand out. So we'll make the velocities on these a little bit higher so that when you hit play, they cut through a little bit more. And you have that push. But we also want them to be a bit louder on two and four as well. All the, all the important beats really, like on the beat, we want them to cut through some more. So I'll increase that too, just not as much. So you can see down here, we've raised the first and third beat by quite a lot, and the second and fourth as well, but just not as much. And then you kind of want to go through and adjust each note individually, because you want it to sound a bit randomized, because that's how a drummer would actually play. It wouldn't be 100% consistent all of the time on each and every hit. So we go through and just change some of these velocities. So we want that to be a little bit louder. Maybe that'd be a bit quieter. Same for that maybe, have that a little bit louder maybe. In fact, let's make that a bit louder too. And now I'll just skip ahead to show you what it should look like. Okay, so now it looks a bit more like this and I've put more of a push on the snares as well because they're not hit as often and we want them to, you want to really feel and hear the snares. So I've put them on a higher velocity. And I've got all the hi-hat notes in between so you'd also want to randomize them. And we can just pick at these and just make them a little bit louder, a little quieter as we see fit, like that. So now it sounds like this, so I'll play this new version and then you can hear the old version afterwards, okay? So it does just sound a bit more realistic and a bit more human. Now we're gonna copy and paste this over onto our second half, so we'll get rid of that and copy that over. Now you don't want two of the exact same patterns right next to each other because then it starts to sound unrealistic again. So you then go through the second half and adjust all of these slightly too. So you can just drag bits as, at random. To be honest, it doesn't really matter as long as it's different as far as I'm concerned. And it's still roughly where you want everything to be. So now they're slightly different, but it's kind of noticeable. Okay, so another really good technique to use to make more realistic sounding drums is to use extra notes or ghost notes. Okay, so ghost notes are essentially quiet notes that you have next to your original beat that just kind of fill it out a little bit more. So I like to use them on the snare quite a lot. So I'll just add another one in, but make it quite quiet. And just chuck a few more in there too. So this, as I say, it just kind of fills out the space a little bit. Okay, so that is quite busy, so I'd probably actually get rid of this one, but it depends on what kind of beat or genre you're working with. And next, I also like to change the hi-hats. So here, they're all on the closed, but I like to take all the ones on the off beats and put them on the pedal note. So just take them, shift them up, so it's on the foot close. So again, it just makes it sound a bit more human and it actually sounds like someone's playing the drums. Another way you can make more realistic sounding drums is by actually putting some of the notes slightly out of time. Uh, it's something you have to be very careful with and you don't want to do it too much, otherwise it does just sound like a bad drummer and sounds sloppy. But I, I quite like just selecting a few random notes, especially like hats and stuff and the odd snare hits, especially the ghost notes actually, so I'll select all of them, why not? And the odd kick here and there. You don't want them to be too close together either actually otherwise then it sounds a bit consistently inconsistent 
So just select all these. We're going to zoom right in, right at the start, and just shift them over just a little bit. In fact, it's probably even a little too much. There we go. Let's try that. And then it probably won't really be noticeable, but it's the really subtle things that make it sound more human. So again, do that by all means, but you do need to be careful with it. Now lastly, I want to talk about fills. Now programming fills can be quite hard, especially to make them sound right. I'm just going to do a quick example in here and then show you a better one that I've done beforehand. Um, so we're just going to put it at the end here in this last beat. We'll delete, we'll just go ahead and delete all that except for the kick. We'll leave that last hit in there. We'll do a standard tom roll starting from mid tom and going down to the low tom. Okay, and we'll have a hi-hat close on there too. Okay, so a super important part to remember whilst programming drums is that you can't have too much playing at once because a drummer only has so many limbs that he can physically pay, play the drums with. Um, the max you can really have at a time is four different hits because he's got, you know, two feet, two arms, any more than that, and it's not realistic. So here we've just got three hits there, and we're going to have an extra snare on this bit. Okay, and whilst doing fills, you want to make sure that the first hit is louder than the second, so we'll just select each of these, make them a little bit louder, in fact, make them a little quieter too. And something I like to do as well is when I'm doing my fills, I imagine what hand the drummer will be hitting what with. So here we've got the low tom and the snare. And as a right-handed drummer, you'd hit the low tom with your right hand and the snare with your left. And as your right hand is a dominant hand, that right sound is going to be louder than the left. So I've got that on a higher velocity than the left there. So I even duck that down a little bit more. So a fill sounds like this. It's kind of simple, but to make it sound even more real is again we're going to displace some of the notes a little bit and I like doing this on when you've got two hits at the same time so we've got a tom and snare here I'm just going to select both of these and put them out a little bit so we're going to push the snare off forward a little bit and we're going to push the tom back a little bit or vice versa however you want to look at it so again subtle but it makes a slight difference So the whole thing from start to finish and then compared with our normal boring one. So you can really hear the difference there. Uh, and now lastly, I'll just show you this fill that I've had before. It's just on a metal track I'm using. Made this fill, really happy with it. And as you can see, just on these tom hits at the end here, quite a lot of it is kind of out of place, but it works really, really well. And it's kind of out of time, but it doesn't really sound it, which is exactly what you want. Also, just whilst I'm here, it's good to point out that the fills are often louder than the rest of it, because that's where drummers tend to, you know, get more into it. So I tend to have all the notes in the fill at a higher velocity than the rest of the pattern. So all of these are really important aspects to remember when programming drums to make them sound more realistic and human. Some parts you have to be quite careful with, especially displacing notes. You want to do it a little bit, and not, but just not too much, otherwise it becomes obvious and it just sounds like a bad drummer. So I hope you found this video useful, and if you have any questions, please leave a comment or contact me via my website. Thanks a lot for watching. Cheers.